Welcome and thank you for clicking on my video. Today we're gonna to be doing that technical analysis and I'm sorry if you guys hear some bang in the background. My 10 month old girl has finally found out where I am in my office and she sometimes bangs on my door and yells dada. It's very cute. But today we're gonna to get into a few things. We're gonna get you those updated daily expected moves. And we're gonna be talking about this move and how it could be a massive trap starting right now. But we're also going to talk about how it could actually end up heading higher just in case, right? We wanna pay attention to both sides. Even though we have some bad signals, I won't be able to get through all of the stocks that we do cover, but I will be getting through some very important things that are happening in the market. But you guys know that this channel is dedicated to helping retail investors or retail traders learn, right? You wanna be able to trade, you wanna be able to invest at the right times. And so we're gonna teach you a little bit here using SoFi as kind of a celeb shot for our videos. I will be putting weekly expected moves for SoFi up on Patreon just because this is such an interesting look. You will get those Sunday night if you are a Patreon member. Thank you so much if you are a Patreon member. And uh, we did put out that video earlier. So if you haven't checked it out, we put up an eight, an update video on Patreon as well. So we're noticing here that SoFi has headed up for a very long time and it's just continued, right? Simple swing trade, swing trade to the upside. Ooh, only one moment that maybe causes a potential to sell. But other than that, you've seen some great upside. Now, these things will have to back off eventually unless it's absolutely just gonna, you know, see some kind of short seller problem. But most of the time, this is gonna curl down and you're actually seeing signals of that now. So when you see a stock that looks dramatically higher like this, like there's no end to the bullishness, you can start to pay attention to two hour charts, okay? So I do like two hour charts. I've used them for a long time. Um, um, I've created a lot of my strategies around these two hour charts and I share that with you in the course down there. We do notice that we are seeing a lot of what we've learned for a long time on this channel, right? We've seen a lot of what we point out in this chart. We're seeing a two hour divergence, okay? So that can mean that a daily pullback is coming. This is the exact same type of look that we saw from Bitcoin and look what that's doing right now. But we notice that there is still room to the center line. The center line, very, very important to understand the MACD, not just what it is, not what the acronym is, but understanding how to utilize it is very, very important. So if I want this two hour to continue to go down, then I probably can't see the price action go up. So if there's going to be one more trap left in this as we're retesting the five and we've held that pretty good this entire move, well then I wanna I see if there's gonna be one last trap. And so if there is going to be one last trap, while we've confirmed this divergence, we could see a 30 minute cross up into positive territory. You notice that the 30 minute is by the center line and therefore I can see another upward move here. So if I was in this, right, let's say I'm short or something like that, saying there's gonna be a big daily pullback, okay. Well, if this 30 minute goes up, that is totally contradictory to my shorts. Okay, so therefore, if this crossed up, got above all these moving averages, retested the five, curled up this MACD, what would that be? That would still be bullish, and this overall 30 minute trend in positive territory would continue. And then maybe we see this turn up, and that's why I'm gonna make a weekly expected move if we do see that turn up and cross back down. I will, you know, if it can leak out to next week. But this is what you're looking for at a top is some kind of divergence for the 30 minute here. It's just this move is extending one more time. And you always want to be aware of when your trade is going wrong. It will help you not to get screwed. But hopefully you guys like our featured stock for the day. I don't know if we'll do a stock a day, but I think SoFi was a good look. I like the two-hour divergence, and I think a daily pullback will come. Maybe a 30-minute move joins us first. Now let's just jump over to the SPY, right? We're going to jump directly over to the SPY on a 30-minute chart, which is the chart I want to pay attention to. I don't have the most time in the world, so I did want to shout out SoFi. I think that's cool. We're adding it to Patreon, so get it while it lasts. Notice here from the SPY that we do have those updated daily expected moves, 604.35 to the upside, 696.95 to the downside. So right away, we see that the divergences here are holding. We saw the blip. We saw it turn right back up. We were mentioning this during our closing stream. We're trying to do a bunch of closing streams this week to, uh, to have some fun and allow people to come in to learn, ask questions. And you'll notice that we never really close below that nine on the uh, 30 minutes. So this cross down was kind of like the weekly that happened in the past that we talked about with the spy and you're going to need that to turn down if that turns down that is divergence that is divergence right here if i blow up the rsi so you can see it 
Ooh, we're on a downward push still. But we're starting to see this push that's violating it. So if we start to violate those divergences, we might still continue that bullishness and we need to watch for signals like this later on. So I would just keep that in your brain. Now we'll notice one thing that could happen tomorrow is we need to pay attention to, right? 604, our daily expected moves. We need to pay attention to 596.95. If we're bearish right away in the day, right? We come down and we hit this level very early on in the day, we'd be filling a gap and there is a support level Level there of 596.95. So even though this looks really bad, we see how they could buy more time. They could reach down to this area, this 30 minute could get down by that center line, and we could end up just turning up and seeing one more push higher, maybe violating that monthly expected move. Now the monthly expected move is right here in yellow. That is 649. We are above it. Bad things, right? Resistance, resistance, breaking through resistance. We'll see if we can keep going but you're gonna need to see, to see some crazy things across the board in order for you to see more upside from here, or you're going to need some uh, stocks that are lagging behind to actually catch up. So something I'd pay attention to tomorrow, Hey, if this 30 minute, it's pointed up, so that could continue. So something to look for, if that is going to continue and we're not gonna get any signals and we get some kind of rug pull moment, is the two hour. The two hour curling down would be a sign that we have divergence at the top, and then we'll get into the cues to show what that looks like. And this is why we really have to pay attention. First of all, you do have 513.41 to the upside, 505.21 to the downside. And we're noticing that this is still controlled. We have not seen that big breakout moment for the queues. They're slowly heading up into liquidity. When you hit that liquidity last time, bad things. So we can pay attention to that upside move. If we continue in that direction, we see a two hour curl down. Well, that will still be close to the center line. You gotta be ready to react because sometimes at major tops, we do see the Qs aren't able to go make a higher high, make that divergence while the SPY is, and that's everything we just talked about in the last portion there. So we can look on the 30 minute and see we have a bunch of little divergences right here, not even getting overbought just yet. So this does say if some other stocks participate, we can react, we can move higher, and end up making those divergences sometime in the future. So we can pay attention to that going forward. As of right now, the Qs are not testing a monthly expected move. Something we can look for early on in the day is the 30 minute is turned down for the cues. It is not turned up like the spy. So if that wants to continue in the downward direction, fill a gap, touch right in here. Hopefully we don't get island reversal though because of all the divergences. That is a possibility. If you gap below here and you're not able to take it back pretty quick, you can keep going. All right, just a note. And we can end up towards a weekly expected move on the bottom side. So just a note there. But if this wanted to curl down to the center line, get down to that 505.21 and curl back up and curl back up, we could see another series of upside here for the cues. I don't have time to fully go through all of these charts, but I just wanted to let you know, like, hey, is there potential for us to go up higher? We need some crazy moves, most likely, to head higher. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click through these real quick on my charts on the left and this right in front of your screen and just say, Apple is one of the stocks. If you're going to see a higher move than this, the options market would be totally taken off guard and you would see something crazy. 68% chance to go down, 32% chance to go up from here. Just so you are aware, there's a higher likelihood to head down so you would have to see something crazy for Apple to participate any further in this move. As we go over to Tesla, we just noticed that Tesla is one that has room. So if this 30 minute could turn up, that actually would be good for the market. And then we'd watch out if we make a curl down really close to the center line, if we get some kind of higher low, lower high, dang it. Um, but that is one that could actually give some room for more upside if it wants to participate. Amazon is showing something a little crazy. So we'd have to continue that craziness to see further upside. You're seeing some small divergence on the really short time frames, but that 30 minute has not curled down yet. That would mean we have a 68% chance to more end below 203 by the end of the week, then we then we only have a 32% chance to keep this craziness going. So one thing we should check here is, has the daily curled up? No, it hasn't. So that could buy some more time, but that is a great, great move for Amazon there. This is one that we were really liking. NVIDIA, NVIDIA is one that if it participated, it would be able to help out the market here. Maybe we could react to a key level and we could form some structure to actually head higher, right? We want to keep in mind, even if we're seeing those type of signals on the spy, those can get violated. We can still get squeezed and things like that. So make sure we're managing risk. As we look forward, AMD is one that could participate a little bit more in order to see that bullishness. We are noticing this little curl down at the end of the day, uh, but it is on the last bar of the day not a full two hours 
in that bar. Now, Meta would have to see something absolutely crazy again, right? We're seeing a lot of stocks that they're coming into these moves and the options market would be completely taken off guard if this happened. So just keep that in mind. If you do see something like this, it is a crazy move and it is not expected in any way for this week. So just keep that in mind. It doesn't mean it can't happen. It just means to me, like, yeah, I need to watch if these things are actually rotating down because, uh, you know, higher percentage chance to actually see this end at lower prices from here for Meta and a lot of other stocks. Microsoft, again, another one that is seeing something really crazy. Now, this isn't all bad for Microsoft. This is a great level to get to. You can see a cup and handle or something like that, but it is likely that we're gonna see this end up going down. And you're noticing that in the post market already, the 68% chance you would end actually probably below something like 425, 32% uh, chance to continue to see something crazy. You're already seeing something crazy for Microsoft. So, and then more so what I'm getting at here is is just an argument for, hey, does the market need to back off here or can the market really just go higher? And in order for it to go higher, a lot of stocks would have to see some crazy moves to the upside when they've already been experiencing crazy moves. We can go look at Google. Google is one that as well has seen um, a test of the weekly expected move. And if that curls down on the 30 minute, that's not a good sign. And so is it more likely to do this by Friday close or more likely to do this? Well, it is more likely to do this at this point. So we still want to pay attention to the fact that this can happen, right? We want to pay attention to the fact that the two hours crossed up, but we want to also note that this was a dramatic drop. We're going to revert back to that five a lot, and then we'll see that curl down. The more the setup for Google would be if you made a stronger base down here, right? We want to see that strength down there, the weakening in momentum, a positive divergence. So that's what we want to see for these things to flip around. AMC and GME real quick. This has triggered now. AMC officially yesterday did trigger ex the exact same signal as Wolf before I found that trade setup. But the difference here is Wolf had great reversal signals, great positive divergence for an upside move when I did that um, did that play. And this one doesn't. This has the opposite. So I just want to go over this very clearly real quick. The 30 minute is showing a bunch of divergence. Very, very obvious. The two hour can curl down from that. If the two hour curls down, maybe we reach down for that five. It's still positive. We'll see if that can swing back up or something could happen because of my theory that I'm testing. I still need 30 to 60 days to really talk thoroughly about that. But on Patreon, we did mention it and explain it a little bit. So AMC, in order to see something crazy, you're not. You're not seeing something crazy yet. 515 looks like they really don't want to close above five dollars so you get above five dollars you get above 515 this thing can see something crazy aka we could be seeing a squeeze a last note here about amc as we pop over to gme which is also showing some multiple point divergence here um, something to keep in mind when we get closer to friday and you're noticing gme where's that resistance come in right at a weekly expected move. So they're very, very useful. And we can see that this would have to do something crazy in order to uh, keep heading higher. So we'll pay attention to it. GME has not triggered my theory just yet, which is very interesting. So my belief is they are seriously fighting AMC today and uh, GME is seeing a little bit more benefit from that right now, but they will tackle GME when they can. So something to note with a lot of these is they do not want these stocks to close at higher prices by Friday close, okay? So most likely we are going to see some kind of consolidation if this thing holds up better, or we're going to see this thing drop before Friday, just to keep you aware. The more the times that you wanna pay attention if something good can happen is going to go into a Monday or Tuesday. Monday and Tuesday, hey, those things can rip a little bit. Maybe they don't have liquidity in the market on those days, I don't know. But Monday and Tuesday seems to be the day where these things actually do happen. And every time towards Friday, we see them fight the stock. So just keep that aware. The battle for GME is happening behind the scenes right now. So be aware that this does have a reversal signal. And if that curls down, that's not a good sign, but it can always curl back up. And we got that little E down there next week. On the VIX, I wanted to talk about the VIX because this is what we were paying attention to, sometime that the four hour can turn up. Now you don't necessarily see great signals for the four hour to turn up. Uh, but you do have us reaching down towards these lows and we see a huge difference, not necessarily divergence just yet, but a huge difference in this MACD is it's almost divergence, but we see that. So if this could turn around here, that would be a bad sign that, or a good sign actually that volatility is coming back in. So then we can go down to the two hour and we can say, okay, if the two hour turns up, that could be a bad, a bad thing. Sorry, I got a hiccup. 
we do notice across the way that this is relatively holding that divergence pretty well here, right? On the, on the RSI, you're actually still above on these levels. Now, we would rather, oops, we would rather see a signal like this over here. So there is potential that we see some kind of two hour drop, a two hour pop in the market, and we actually see that pop up right over here. You're looking for this. This would be the most clear setup to happen over here. So just pay attention to that. If we do experience some volatility, see some kind of bounce, we can form that over time. Does the two hour have a good chance to bounce right now? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Okay, the, the vol volatility here actually spiking up. We noticed that that came right as the FOMC minutes came out. They're pretty much talking the same, dependent on data. Some people leaning towards, hey, we might cut rates a little faster. Some people leaning towards pausing. The main thing is pay attention to the signals. They will help you much more than Jerome Powell. Has he really helped you? Was it transitory? Come on. So we see here the 30 minute divergence down here on the MACD. We see that is there on the RSI as well, pointing in the upward direction. So you have positive divergences here in the uh, price action. Well, technically the reading, because VIX is technically a reading, is heading down. So this tells us that right now the um, two hour does have a good chance to pop from here. And you're getting that to confirm. You're just waiting to see also if that two hour can turn up now because that would say there's a two hour pop in volatility that can get pretty dramatic because of Nvidia. And actually I'll probably leave Nvidia up there because this is the main signal you need to be paying attention to this week. If Nvidia does not get positivity, this is going to be very, very important. Are we going to curl down on this weekly chart for Nvidia right as GME and AMC start to make these moves higher? It does kind of, the, the, the technicals add validity to those people who are saying like Nvidia could be the collateral for the, the AMC GME problem. Upward price action, negative momentum there. So negative uh, divergence, you see the triple divergence on the RSI. This is really, really weak and it's just about to cross. So pay very close attention to this signal. Nvidia is a huge stock and that can cause a lot of problems if this crosses on the weekly scale. For Nvidia, we do have the opportunity to bounce here just because we are by a weekly expected move and that is where bounces tend to happen. Doesn't have to happen though, because this 30 minute has been moving sideways for a little bit of time and we could just see that continue if that crosses down. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, hopefully you guys get those daily expected moves up on your charts. We will be paying attention to the market in the morning and hopefully be able to go live again for the close. So make sure you tune the, on those notifications. Thank you so much. Please, if you're here to the end, leave a like on this video. We want more people to be, to be able to learn. And hey, let's get the channel to 10K by Christmas. I think that would be cool. But the main thing there, guys, is we really want to help retail traders. We really want to help them understand these indicators because a lot of them just throw it up on their charts and then kind of just say when it curls up, okay, cool, right? They don't really understand it. Um, hopefully you do at this point if you've been around here for a little bit of time. But if you need more clarity, that's what the course is for. It's to give you extreme clarity, to teach you exactly how I look at things and why I look at things that way, right? We explain it very thoroughly and that's currently currently 90% off for the next only five days. Actually, tomorrow you're only gonna have four days left, so get it while it lasts. Thank you guys for watching. Have a great night, um, and I will see you guys first thing in the morning. Peace out.